Welcome back to Seeing Caribbean News. It's now time for In Depth. In Jamaica, the estimates of revenue as and expenditure for the financial year 2016-2017 was presented to Parliament on Thursday, which coincided with the official opening of Parliament following the change of government in February this year. The highly anticipated budget presentation was expected to highlight the details surrounding the implementation of the 1.5 tax plan. But when Parliament convened, nothing was said about the plan, nor were details given regarding anything contained in the Book of Estimates. However, it was revealed that the budget is a slim $580 billion. Meanwhile, during the opening of the Parliament, the throne speech delivered by Governor-General Sir Patrick Allen called for partnership among both the major political parties to grow the country forward. The Governor-General announced that during the financial year, the government will be pursuing the implementation of an electronic business registration system, a trade facilitation program, an ICT program, a human capital management enterprise system, and accelerating the digitizing and public records management with the records and information program policy. He also outlined that the government will continue to drive the growth and job creation agenda with debt management, tax reform, pension reform, financial sector reform, monetary policy, implementation of reforms to develop to for the development of applications process implementation of new special economic zones regime and a trade facilitation. To delve a little more into the day's activities, we have been joined by economist Dr. Davidson Dawe and political analyst Richard Crawford. Welcome to In-Depth, gentlemen. Good evening. Hi, thank you. Okay, Mr. Crawford, we begin with you. Are you surprised that no detail was expounded on for the 1.5 plan, which has been shrouded in controversy since the general elections? No, I don't think I was surprised on that because <clears throat> what, what you have today is a, a recap of recent statements from the government and the public and particular persons who have a special interest in the issue of this tax reform package. Um, no, I'm not surprised. They're, they're still looking to see how they can implement it. So you'll just have to wait a little bit longer to see if it is going to be implemented. As Mr. Shah says, he's going to do it. We're going to do it. Um, but I don't know. It seems as if the advice being given, or certainly by um, Richard Biles and Ross and Hyman, that, that it might not be wise to proceed with it, uh, could be taken into account. But I think the government is determined as we, we can put it, is determined to honor an election campaign promise. Mm -hmm. And I think that that takes precedence right now. Dr. Dawe. Yes? Hi. The budget is a slim one, $580 billion, and this is a major drop from the $808 billion from last year. Can this slim figure efficiently run Jamaica for the next year? All right. First of all, let me just let me just state that I'm having a little problem hearing you. Okay. Let me repeat. Think, let me repeat the question. Yes. The 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 figure for the budget for 2016-2017 fiscal year is 580 billion dollars, and yes. this represents a major drop from the 808 billion dollars that was approved for last year's financial year. Can a right. slim figure as 580 billion dollars effectively run Jamaica for the next 12 months? Um, I didn't get the last part. For some reason, we have a bad connection. But um, I'm assuming that you're asking as to, you know, you're talking in comparisons, right? Right. Right. Okay. First of all, first of all, there are a lot of initiatives. There are a lot of initiatives that the new government would like to put in place that they just can't put in place. And we have to face facts. We have to face the reality of this thing. But right now, they're at a crossroads. They're at a, they're at a, quag, they're at a, they're at a quagmire. <laughs> Because you see, they there's a political promise, and that promise they want to keep. However, it is impossible for them to keep it. First of all, the budget is below the norm. The budget that was what that was that, that was allocated for this the next year will not be able to accommodate any kind of a program that cannot be funded. And by just looking at the nature of our, of our budget at this point, we know that all of these excessive programs that they talk about will either be underfunded or just cannot be implemented at all. 
because we have to we have to face reality at this point that you know a political promise is not reality i remember i had the opportunity to speak at some of the network about that when they initially made the promise and they said it will not happen in order for this to happen which we would have to have a growth in our economy of at least of at least 2.8 percent for us to be able to even think in terms of implementing something like the, the, the promise that was made. So, see, there is some kind of fallacy around. You know, there's something that is happening that people have to be aware of, and that is they made the promise as a means of getting into power, but it will not be implemented and cannot be implemented with any kind of authority unless there is a supplement to that particular promise, and it's not possible at this time. Okay. Mr. Crawford. Hello, Mr. Crawford. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh -huh. Now, the PNP says there is nothing new in the... I didn't hear you. The PNP says there is nothing new in the budget that they heard today based on the throne speech from the Governor General. Now, having perused that speech, do you see anything that's similar to what was presented by the PNP last time around? Well, essentially, essentially, yes. I mean, it's not a matter of what the PNP presented the last time around. Essentially, I think the, the country is in the same position that it was in, um, basically tied into the IMF agreement and some other aspects maybe of the agreement that have to take place. I mean, the, reduct, the reduced amount for expenditure is a stark signal. I mean, um, based on what we lived under in Jamaica last year, more money. Can you imagine what's going to happen to us this year with less money, basically? So it's not that, um, it, it really is just a continuation of what was there before. The Jamaica Labor Party won the election. They won the election on a number of issues. Some seem to be the issues of the promise of the tax reform package and other issues that are going to cost a lot of money. Um, things like reducing school fees, free health care. Um, the sugar industry seems as if it's collapsing. Where is the government going to find all of the money to handle this? That That is probably not new, but that is the important question to be asked. And they haven't even addressed the issue of fighting crime, which is a major deterrent to increasing production, which you have to do in Jamaica. So by and large, I, I don't see it in party terms. I can't see it in party terms. There's nothing different, really, that's happening under this government, except perhaps a more austere um, budget coming for, for the people of Jamaica. Okay. Now, Dr. Dawe. Yes. The announcements made by the Governor General regarding the drive factors for growth in this physical year, you've already said the budget is pretty much a dream, but is there anything in the list of uh, accomplishments to be had that you consider to be feasible? Uh, well, you know, uh, you know, there are things that can be accomplished, of course. There are always things that can be accomplished. You know, uh, in terms of you know the social the social welfare programs and stuff. You know, I think that's 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 something that is quite quite feasible at this time. Uh, as as was alluded to by by Dr. Crawford, Mr. Crawford, what 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 I know is is that the situation in Jamaica that is really hindering progress and is going to affect a lot of of programs that should be initiated, and that is the crime situation. Nobody has yet determined a formula to solve our crime problem. Now, we know very well that in order for crime to, to eliminate itself, education is the essence. All right? However, there is not see a thrust in, whatever, in, 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 the, in the budget or in anything that anyone in the government is saying to, to make me believe that we are going to, to, to put a dent in crime. Now, remember that crime will also affect our tourist industry. And, you know, and, and that 
is a very significant part of the, of the revenue that Jamaica receives. You see, we, we, we have everything that we need to, to have a good tourist product, except for one thing. And that is, we have not the So, you know, although some things are achievable, I believe that the most achievable aspect of the budget is the one having to do with the social welfare program. We're going to have to continue this conversation, but thank you so very much for joining me, gentlemen.